of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment throughout the day when you set your radio dial to this NBC station. When it's time for Double or Nothing, you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Yes, Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Then there's the program of the heart, Strike It Rich. Just the prescription to cure your housework blues. From Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you Welcome Travelers and interviews with his many interesting guests. And for more fun, listen to this year's Peabody Award winning comics, Bob and Ray. And remember to dial Dave Garraway for music and relaxing entertainment. Consult your local newspaper for the broadcast time of these Monday through Friday programs. Keep a weather eye on your watch and hear every minute of these great shows. Remember, it's double or nothing... Strike it rich, welcome travelers, Bob and Ray, and dial Dave Garraway every day on the NBC Radio Network. Now, here's today's Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Stick Up. It is early morning, September 6, 1938, the day after Labor Day. In the quiet little town of Avon, Texas, the last breakfast customer has just left Baker's Beanery. Owner Tom Baker, alone in the roadside cafe, stands behind the counter, washing dishes. Oh, howdy, General. Howdy, boy. Sure getting hard, ain't it? Uh-huh. I reckon I could give you a hand with them dishes in exchange for a bottle of soda pop? You're sure playing it safe. What do you mean? I saw you watching through the window. You waited till I got down to this last plate before you come in with that proposition. Oh, saw me, eh? Hmm. You want me to fill the sugar bowls for you? Already done that. Need some spuds peeled, though. How many? About a bushel. Oh. Then I guess I'll have to pay in cash. <laughs> General, you're the biggest moocher in the whole state of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get a free one off you yet. Now, how about giving a cash customer some service, boy? Just one thing first. What's that? You sure you got a nickel? I mean, you ain't going to finish the soda and then tell me you lost the money through a hole in your pocket. You ain't never going to forget that, are you? Well, this time I got the money. Five cents? Well, uh... I got four cents. I'll give you IOU for the other penny. That's all right. I'll trust you. You'll be in a war hero and all that. What kind do you want? What kind you got? Oh, sarsaparilla, grape, orange, lime, cherry. Hey, you got root beer? Yep. That's what I want. All right. Here you are. Hey, shove them straws down here, will you? Sure you don't want me to drink it for you? I can manage, thank you. Well... What are you waiting for, boy? That four cents, or do you want me to send you a bill at the end of the month? Go on. Wait on that young fella that just come, come in. Come on, let's see your money first. Be right there, mister. All right. Money crazy, that's all you are. That's uh, one penny. Yep. Two. Mm-hmm. See, it's an Indian head penny. Nineteen or seven. Come on, come on, hurry up. Three. Now... That's funny. I'd have swore I had another penny. Got another hole in your pocket? Oh, I guess I just forgot to sew up the old. How about it, mister? I'm in a hurry. Come in, come in. Want to see the menu? No. Give me a pack gun. All oh, right, what flavor? Tell me. Hey, Tom. I got a glass with some ice in it. You trying to bankrupt me or something? <laughs> Here's your gum. That'll be a whole nickel. Thank you. Five cents out of a quarter. I'll take that folding money. What? Put down that gun. Just give me the money and hurry it up. Hey, right. Shut up, hey, old man. Stay back. Let me have that gun. Let's go. Give me that gun. Give me that. Come here, you old. Stop. Hey, Tom. 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 Hey,
Stop her, I'll shoot. Stop, stop. Uh, uh, Miss Jim Tuck, I got the truck. General, General, you're bleeding. Jack. Oh, no. Tom Baker notified the sheriff's office of the attempted robbery and killing. Sheriff Lon Gunther could not be reached immediately, and the assistance of the Texas Rangers was requested. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned and arrived at the scene ten minutes later. The sheriff arrived soon after, and he joined the ranger in questioning Mr. Baker. Is the gun on the counter, Mr. Baker? Yeah, that's it, Ranger. I was trying to get it away from the guy when it went off. I never should have done it. I should have just given him the money that... General might be alive right now if I had. Now, there's no use figuring that way, Tom. Well, it's... You cover him up with those towels? Yeah, I couldn't stand them people looking in at him. Yeah, I know how you feel, Tom. All of us who knew him had a soft spot for the old boy. You know, it's a funny thing. I never did know his real name. Mm -hmm. How'd the killer escape? In a truck. I fired at him a few times before he drove off. You hit him? I don't think so, but I know I put a couple holes in the back of the truck. What kind was it? Half-ton pickup, painted red. Did you get the license number? No, I didn't. How about the make and year? Well, I don't know the make, but I'd say it was about a 34 model. Where was the truck parked? Under the live oak over there. You can see through the window here. That's right over there. Uh-huh. And it was parked kind of catty corner, so he had to jump in the right side. Could you see into the cab? No, I couldn't. What'd the man look like? Oh, about average height, dark hair, just an ordinary looking guy. How old? His 20s, I'd say. How was he dressed? Denim pants, the black cowboy shirt with white piping, like tore his sleeve off when we was fighting. We'll put out an all points bulletin, Sheriff. You might not find it so easy to hide a red truck with bullet holes in it. While waiting for the JP to authorize the removal of the body, I put out an APB on the truck and the killer. Sheriff and I then drove Tom Baker down to the sheriff's office to get his statement and let him look over the mug files. About two hours later, we got a call from the highway patrol. They found the truck abandoned on Farm Road 107, about 25 miles east of Avon. The license tags were missing, but from the motor number, the highway patrol was able to get the owner's name. The truck belonged to a man named Ed Jaffe. He lived on a ranch about seven miles from where the truck was found. The sheriff and I drove out to talk to him. Jaffe must be working on shares here. Why do you say that? Uh, the place belongs to old man Robinson. He's been living up at Fort Worth last couple of years. <laughs> Jaffe ain't taking care of it the way he did. Uh. Yes? Howdy, ma'am. I'm Sheriff Gunther. This is Ranger Pearson. Is Ed Jaffe here? Oh, did you find our truck? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Waiting, Martha. A ranger and a sheriff. They found the truck. A day in. Come on in, won't you? Thanks. I just got back from my sister's. Been there over Labor Day. And when Ed told me our truck was stolen, I was a sick about it. Howdy, ranger. Sheriff. Howdy. Howdy. You fellas sure work fast. <laughs> just reported that truck missing about a half hour ago. Yeah? Where'd you find it? About seven miles down the road. Yeah, well, I can take the bus down and pick it up, I guess. We'd like to ask you a few questions first. Sure. Yeah, what about... Where was your truck stolen from? Uh, right outside the house. I'll show you where I had it parked. Uh, I'll be right back, Martha. Well, let me know if you go over to get the truck. Yeah, that's no honey. I had it parked right over there by the corral. You didn't know it was gone until 30 minutes ago, huh? That's right. Tell me, don't I know you from somewhere, Mr. Jaffe? Got a good memory, Ranger. That was a long time ago, four years. Over in Coleman County, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Ranger Morgan brought you in, didn't he? Yeah. What for? Oh, burglary. Knocked over a filling station and did 18 months at Huntsville. But I'm out of that racket for good. Yeah? yeah darn right, I'm ranching now. I ain't fixing to spend no more time at Huntsville. I guess you wouldn't know then about your truck being used in a robbery and murder, would you? Oh, wait a minute, I... I don't know anything like that. You think it's just a coincidence? Look, I made a mistake once and I paid for it. Eighteen months. Now, if my truck was used like you say, don't try to pit it on me just because I got a record. The killing took place about five hours ago. How come you waited until half an hour ago to report your truck was stolen? Because I didn't know it was gone till then. I wasn't here. Besides, why'd I call the cops if I was tied up in it? 
To try to look innocent, maybe? That's been tried lots of times. But I... Where were you this morning? I, w- I was with Will Hicks at his place about three miles from here. All morning? That's right. I was up in them shingly's roof. Look, you're just picking on me because I got a record. If you're innocent, you got nothing to worry about. Look, I couldn't have been mixed up in no crime if I was at Will's place. And I was there from seven this morning till noon. Yeah. Well, let's go talk to this friend of yours and see if your alibi holds up. That his house over there? Yeah, it just turned down this dirt road. There's somebody working on the roof, all right. Sure, that's Will. I told you he was putting shingles on it. Don't you want me to come with you? No, you stay here with the sheriff. Mr. Hicks? Yeah. Can you come down for a while? I want to talk to you. Oh, just a minute. Get this roof finished. Say it's going to rain tonight. What can I do for you, Ranger? You know where Ed Jaffe was this morning? Ed? Oh, why, sure. He's right here with me. Oh, well, say, what's he doing over there in the car with the sheriff? We've been talking to him. How long was he here this morning? Oh, let's see. I drove over and got him about seven. He helped me on the roof till about noon, I guess. Did you take him home then? Yeah, he had to get started on his chores. Are you checking up about his pickup being stolen? That's part of it. Yeah, we saw it was missing as soon as we got over to his place. Did Mr. Jaffe leave you at any time during the morning? No, we were working together the whole time. You know, I'm surprised this isn't a ranger on just a car theft. It's more than that, Mr. Hicks. Your friend's truck was used in a robbery and killing. Killing? Yeah. I'd like you to come down to the sheriff's office in Avon and make a written statement about Jaffe being here all morning. Well, is that necessary? I'm afraid so. Well, say, Ranger, uh, can I do that a little later, in about an hour? I'd like to get this roof finished if I can. The radio said we're going to have rain tonight. That'll be all right, Mr. Hicks. We'll see you then. And thanks for your help. Well, that's okay. What did he tell you, Ranger? He says you were here all right. You going to take me home now? Not yet. I want someone to take a look at you. Who's that? The man who saw the killer face to face. We drove Ed Jaffe into town and took him into the sheriff's office. We had Tom Baker look at him. He was positive Jaffe was not the killer. We had one of the sheriff's deputies drive Jaffe back to his ranch and proceeded to show Tom Baker more mugshots of every man picked up for robbery in the county within recent years. An hour later, Mr. Baker was still looking... This one? No. No. Uh, no. How about this one, Mr. Baker? No. Uh, let me see. No, nothing like him. Yeah, that's the last of this bunch. I declare I'm bushed. Must have looked at a thousand of these pictures. And quite, but these are the most likely ones. You mean you got more? Thousands of them. We'll have to get them from Austin. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. They didn't tell me you were busy. Come on in, Mr. Hicks. We're just about finished. Sorry, it took so long getting here. That's okay. Uh, Mr. Hicks, this is Tom Baker. Howdy. Howdy. Ranger, is there anything else I can do for you now? I guess you might as well go home and get some rest. You had a rough day. We'll call you just as soon as we get those other mug shots here. All right. I am kind of done in. I'll be over at the beanery when you want me. So long. So long, Tom. Bye, Mr. Baker. Sit down, Mr. Hicks. We'll take your statement now. Thanks. Uh, Ranger, I, I, I got to tell you something. What is it? Uh, that fellow just left here. Is he the one who saw the killer? Yeah. Uh, has he seen Ed? Just a little while ago. He definitely cleared him, though. Well, I'm sure glad to hear that. But I still got to tell you something. What's on your mind, Mr. Hicks? Well, I, it, it's hard for me to say this. I, I never lied to no officer of the law before. But, but I just thought I was doing a, Ed a favor and it wouldn't hurt nobody. What do you mean? Well, Ed come to me just before noon. You know his wife was away. Yeah. And he said he'd been down here in town seeing some gal he knows. You know how some fellas are. And what about it? Well, he told me his pickup was really stolen in front of this gal's house. He didn't want his wife to find out where he was. So, so he asked me to tell her or anybody else that, that he was with me all morning helping to fix my roof. He wasn't with you? No, sir. He wasn't. Why didn't you tell me that before? Well... When you told me it wasn't just a stolen truck, but a killing, why, I just didn't know what to do. Uh Uh-huh. Well, that sure puts a new light on things. In the first place, I don't think there was a woman. Why do you say that, Jason? Look, if his truck really was stolen in town, he'd have gone to your office and reported it. 
He wouldn't have mentioned who he was visiting. Well, then, then why'd he tell me that story about a woman? So you'd come to his rescue and say he was with you all morning? Yeah, but now, Jace, if there was no woman, why, why would he want to use Hicks as an alibi? Because maybe that truck of his wasn't stolen at all. Maybe he was driving it himself this morning. Now, hold on, Jace. That mule won't pull. Baker said himself Jaffe wasn't the killer. I know, Sheriff. But Baker saw only one man. That doesn't mean there wasn't another one waiting in the truck. Come to think of it, he did say the killer climbed in on the right side. And I got a feeling that on the left side was the driver, Ed Jaffe. Come on, Sheriff. We're going to pick him up. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Twenty seconds from now, a fire will break out somewhere in the United States, causing untold misery and devastation. Yes, every 20 seconds, all day long, a fresh fire starts in a home or a factory or a forest. More than 11,000 persons are killed annually by these fires. The most tragic part of this statement lies in the fact that more than 90% of all fires in the home start through sheer carelessness and could be avoided. Here are a few simple rules of safety which will help you to protect your home and your loved ones from the ravages of fire. First, do not smoke in bed or discard lighted cigarettes carelessly. Second, clean out old newspapers, magazines, and other inflammable debris. Third, repair all defective wiring and electrical equipment at once. Fourth, use only those cleaning fluids which will not burn. And fifth, be careful with matches. Keep them out of reach of small children. You can't afford to gamble with fire. The odds are against you every time. And now, back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Stick Up. With Jaffe no longer having an alibi, the sheriff and I were pretty sure he could have been involved in the killing. We had the local magistrate issue a search warrant and headed out to Jaffe's place. It was about 5.30 in the afternoon when he pulled up in front of his house. Mrs. Jaffe heard our car approaching and came out to see who it was. Howdy, Ranger. Howdy, Howdy ma'am. Jaffe. How come you wouldn't let Ed bring the truck back? Well, I'm afraid we have to hold it for a while, for evidence. Your husband here, Mrs. Jaffe? No, he's out moving the cows from the lower section up to the north range. How long ago did he leave? He took off just after he got back from town, about half an hour ago. Is he on foot? No, he saddled up the mare. You gents want to come in, wait for him? No, thanks. I think we'll ride out and meet him. Uh, could I borrow one of your horses, ma'am? Why, sure, sir. Take that roan from the corral over there. Thank you. I'll get charcoal out of the trailer. If you want to wait, I know it'll be back pretty soon. I'm afraid the business we've got with your husband, ma'am, won't wait. The sheriff and I saddled up and took off across the fields in the direction Mrs. Jaffe had indicated. Ed Jaffe's tracks were easy to follow, but they did not lead to the lower section. Instead, they led to a dry wash about four miles from the house. What in the world do you think Jaffe came down here for? I don't know. Hey, wait a minute, Sheriff. Oh, 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 oh. What is it, Jake? Mm, a lot of cigarette butts over there. Yeah. Plenty of foot tracks here, too. Well, they must have stayed here quite a spell, or he, he wouldn't smoke this many. Not Jaffe, Sheriff. Someone else. Look at all these footprints. They're made by a man wearing shoes, not boots like Jaffe. Yeah. You think this other fella could be the killer? Maybe hiding out here and Jaffe came to meet him? I don't know. Jaffe met someone here, all right. Yeah. Whoever it was, he sure must have been nervous. Darn near wore a rut in the dirt, pacing up and down. Come here, Sheriff. What is it, Jason? Find something else? Yeah, black shirt. Spotted the edge of it sticking out from under the brush. White piping and a torn sleeve. Like the one Baker said the killer wore. I guess Jaffe brought him a change of clothing. I wonder where they went. We better find out before they get too far. There's the tracks Jaffe's horse made leaving here. Yeah. Hold still. Let's go, Charky. I don't see the other fellow's tracks, Jason. They must be riding double with Jaffe. That could slow him down, son. Uh Uh-huh. Come on, Sheriff. Let's knock on it. Yeah. Hey, Jace. Oh, Charky. Oh, boy. Jace, 
I saw Jaffe from up there. He was coming toward us. Riding through the wash? No, no, he's above it. Coming this way. Come on, Charky. Easy, boy. Easy. Now, he he was alone, Jace. Just coming over that rise. Yeah. There, see him? Yeah. What's on the other side of the rise? The highway. That's probably where he's been. Come on. Up. Come on, boy. Look, he's turning around, Jace. Jaffe, hold up! He doesn't hear you. He'll hear this. He heard that, all right. Yeah, he sure did. Go to the beer, Ranger! You know darn well we were, Jaffe. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, oh. Why'd you run? I didn't hear you, honest. Not until I heard those shots. What's the matter? Where's the man you met back there in that wash? Man? What man? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I just bet you don't. Where have you been? I've just been up to the store. Yeah? You sure you weren't taking your pal to the highway? No, I just went to the store for a bottle of beer. Come on, Jaffe. We're going back to that highway. The sheriff and I took Jaffe back to the highway. There was no sign of the other man. We went to the nearby store. The owner told us Jaffe had not been in all day. We then drove Jaffe into town and began questioning him. He kept insisting he was innocent. Why do we have to go over the whole thing again, Ranger? I tell you, it's all a big mistake of some kind. No use lying anymore, Jaffe. We followed your tracks and found that shirt on your property. I never saw that shirt before. Look, Ranger, just because I got a record, that don't mean I'm mixed up in nothing. Then why'd you lie about where you were this morning? All right, I tell you. I was with a woman. I didn't want my wife to know when I... What's her name? I don't remember. I don't know it too well. Where does she live? I, I don't know the name of the street. That story is no good, Jaffe. What do you mean? You think I'm lying? Yes. Well, I ain't. You got no right to say that. Now, listen to me, Jaffe. We know you spun that yarn to Hicks about a woman, so he'd give you an alibi for this morning. But you weren't with a woman, and you weren't with Hicks. Yeah, well, where was I? I'll tell you where you were. You were in your pickup truck. It wasn't stolen. You were driving it. No, I wasn't. You had this other fellow with you, the one wearing the black shirt. And the two of you stopped at Baker's Cafe. No. You kept the motor running while he went in. I wasn't there, I tell you. You're an accomplice, Jaffe. You're as guilty as if you pulled the trigger yourself. Now, wait a minute. Look, suppose I was there. I was outside. I didn't tell him to go in there and knock over the place. That's something you're going to have to prove in court. But if you don't tell us who the other fella is, you're going to stand this murder rap alone. They'll throw the book at you. You think I'm kidding? Uh-huh. Then who is he? What's his name? Cal Martin. I met him about a month ago and tipped in. Just a punk. Works behind the soda fountain in the bowling alley over there. Does he have a record? He don't have nothing, including brains. You put him up to the robbery? No, I didn't know he was going to do nothing like that. He's just driving along, and he said he wanted to stop at Baker's place and get a drink of water. Said he was thirsty. So I stopped. Didn't know he had a gun on him. After the old man was killed, what'd you do then? Oh, we ditched the truck where you found it and hiked over toward my place. I told Martin to stay in that wash and keep out of sight till it got dark. Then I went over to Will Hicks and asked him to say I was with him. Right after that, you called the highway patrol to report your truck was stolen. Yeah. This afternoon, I took Martin one of my old shirts so we could get rid of that black one. Darn thing stood out like a sore thumb. Where'd you take him? Over the highway. Flag down a bus going toward Tipton. Is that where he lives? Yeah. We said he was going to pack and try to make it down to Mexico. Let's get over to Tipton, Sheriff. Maybe if we hurry, we can change his plans. The Sheriff booked Ed Jaffe immediately, and the two of us took off for Tipton. We arrived there about 9.30 that night. After getting a search warrant, we went to Martin's address, a room above a small hardware store. On the letterbox next to his name, it said Room 2. I reckon he's still here, Jay. Could be. I phoned the bus station while you were getting the warrant. No bus leaving here till midnight. He's probably waiting in his room rather than go out in the street. There's room two. There's a light under the door. Guess he's still here. Hear anything? No. Sounds like he's in there, Jason. Open up, Martin. It's locked. You better cover me, Sheriff, while I break it in. Well, he's gone. Take a look in that closet. Okay, Jason. Not in here, Jason. I guess he... What's the matter? Shh. He's outside on the ledge next to the window. I saw the edge of his jeans. What? Well, let's get him. No. My jumper fall. Well, I guess he's already skipped, Sheriff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess he has, Jason. Let's go. All right. Yeah, we'll go down and try the bus station. That's a good idea. I have to get this door fixed tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we sure will. Keep walking down the hall. You think he'll come back in the room now? Well, if he fell for our little act. 
He's going downstairs and outside. He might get scared and jump anyhow. Are you going back and wait for the door? Yeah. Keep going so he can hear your steps going down. Okay, but you watch yourself, Jane. Right. an old man in Avon this morning? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't know. No nothing. use, Martin. Jaffe told us the whole story. No, I don't believe it. Well, he did. Jason, you all right? Yeah, everything's under control, Sheriff. You better put your cuffs on him. Yeah. Come on, you put your hands up. Look, I, I didn't Get him out shoot there. anybody. It was an accident. I'm afraid the law looks at it a little different, son. When you rob a place with a gun, it's never an accident. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Tomorrow on most NBC stations, the Railroad Hour will bring you its 200th consecutive broadcast as Gordon McRae and Dorothy Warren Schultz co-star in an original operetta. Yes, tomorrow marks the 200th week that the Railroad Hour has come into your homes to make your Monday evening more enjoyable. Tomorrow's operetta is based on the life of the famous pirate Jean Lafitte and is appropriately titled The Pirate of New Orleans. And to make your Monday night of music of NBC even more enjoyable, you want to hear both the Telephone Hour and the Voice of Firestone. Ezio Pinza will return to the Telephone Hour guest spot tomorrow to sing such favorites as Serenata and Into the Night. Christopher Lynch will be guest soloist on the Voice of Firestone, and he will sing the old refrain and bless this house. So remember, for the finest in musical listening, consult your local newspaper for the time of these three programs on the NBC Radio Network. And join us tomorrow for the Railroad Hour, the Voice of Firestone, and the Telephone Hour. And now to the conclusion of tonight's Texas Rangers adventure. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Cal Martin and Ed Jaffe were charged with armed robbery and murder with malice. Jaffe was sent to the retrieve unit of the state penal system to serve a 30-year sentence. On February 9, 1939, Cal Martin was sentenced to 32 years at the state penitentiary in Huntsville. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Ray is currently seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Tom Tully, Leroy Leonard, Harley Bear, Junie Ellis, and Lamont Johnson. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Bernard Editor and Robert A. White, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Tales of the Texas Rangers is heard each week overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, hear the Hollywood Bowl concert on NBC.